Hi, everybody. My name is Lisa Kessler, and I'm with Kessler Insurance, and I am here today with my dear friend, Joanne Burchuk. Hey, Joanne. Hi, Lisa. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Joanne Burchuk. I'm with Lighthouse Physical Therapy, and um, today, on behalf of Cheers for Charity, we have Skip Smith, who is with the Share Fund. Actually, it's not the Share Fund. It's just Share Fund. And uh, welcome, Skip. Um, please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your organization. Well, thank you, ladies, and, and thank you for the Cheers for Charity. It's an awesome, uh, awesome thing that you're doing as well. So we appreciate it. Uh, Share Fund or Share Fund Inc. to be the official word uh, is based out of Rochester, New Hampshire. Uh, we started about 30 years ago. It was actually started as a kind of a mission offshoot from uh, one of the local parishes. And then uh, back in around the early 2000s, they decided that they would roll it into its own separate 501c3. And um, along that way, we also had uh, kind of got joined at the hip with one of the parishioners had started a uh, a great little food pantry, literally in the basement of his house, uh, Jerry Rainville. And so we adopted Jerry's food pantry as well. So in 2007, Share Fund Inc. became the official 501c3 nonprofit that we are today. And uh, we, we have a kind of a bunch of different streams going on, which is great for a guy like me because I love to have, have multiple action. I got to have, I don't know if it's the ADHD or what, but I, I need to have a lot going on. So it's good. So we, we uh, offer services to the greater Rochester area um, through our food pantry, uh, through our emergency financial assistance office, um, through our diaper bank, as well as through our clothing and thrift store. Um, so there's a lot, lot going on um, and we're serving um, the greater Rochester area, which when I say that, what I mean to say is it's Farmington, New Hampshire, it's Rochester, it's Gonick, um, it's Summersworth, New Hampshire, and we even reach into Wakefield, New Hampshire as well. Wonderful. That's great. And um, so it sounds like you have kind of a storefront. What is, what, what's yes. the experience there? So we're blessed that we're, we're actually have a super, super deal on rent through the city of Rochester. We're in the what used to be the school is now the um, James Foley Memorial Community Center right next to Spalding High School on, on 150 Wakefield Street in Rochester. And what we do is that we, we're actually in the old high school cafeteria, great place for a food pantry, right? Um, right. So the food pantry is based there. Um, we have a couple of offices um, that we operate out of and then adjacent to um, the food pantry is our thrift store location. So when you come into the community center, you can come right to everything's all right under one roof. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, so you guys have a lot going on there. So just to start off with uh, the clothing piece, piece of it, um, I assume you are taking donations as well as um, are the clothing that people find there, um, are they discounted or are they free of charge or how does that work for people coming so, by? So we, so we definitely take donations. Um, that's, that's what fuels that, that whole program is our, our neighbors, you know, cleaning out their closet, especially the last couple of years with COVID. They've, a lot of them have spent some time at home and been able to clean the garage and the attic and the basement and everything else. So that's been a win for us. And um, so, yes, yeah, so we accept donations and um, we basically carry uh, clothing for all ages and sizes, as well as we carry some small housewares, uh, books, uh, CDs, uh, toys for the kids. Um, nothing large, unfortunately. I, I actually wish we did have a bigger space because we have a lot of requests and a lot of donors that would like to give uh, larger items, but we just don't have the space. Uh, but what happens is it's, it's kind of a two-pronged piece. So, so the, the first and foremost is that after people donate and we sort through them and we hang them out by size and whatnot, um, places like city welfare, um, a local church organization, DHS, community partners, um, they will refer folks to us. They'll give a, a, you know, a company letterhead that says uh, Lisa and her family of three really could use some help with some clothing for spring or they had a fire or they're moving into an apartment and they need some new things. And they'll come in and based on the size of the family, they'll get a dollar amount shopping credit. 
and then they can go and literally they shop for free. Um, and that's that's our main purpose of that thrift store. But along the way, we're also open to the general public a couple of days a week. And everything is extremely great bargains. I mean, you can get men's and women's clothes for $2 or less, uh, children's clothes for a dollar or less, um, books, you know, stuff a bag for a dollar. So um, not really big sales, but, but it adds up. And everything that is purchased from the thrift store, those monies go back into the share fund uh, for our other programs, um, our overhead, our like I said, our great deal on rent that the city gives us, as well as things like uh, purchasing milk and other items for our food pantry to distribute to our neighbors in need. That's wonderful. Um, so the second piece you talked about was the financial piece. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, yeah, so um, what the share fund initiate, initially started with from uh, Holy Rosary Parish that 30 some years ago was an outreach to neighbors in need uh, of financial assistance. Um, you know, they get getting behind in a, an electric bill or uh, someone that's homeless that's uh, looking to move into their first apartment and needs help with security deposit. Uh, someone that's had an emergency medical need uh, fuel assistance, that type of thing, um, where uh, first they try the traditional resources, which is usually city welfare and our uh, local cap office. And then once they've received or not received from them for a variety of reasons, um, then they come to us and we try to help fill those, those gaps. And one of the gaps that I'm particularly proud of is that we started a couple of years ago, a, an auto repair program. So um, you know, all of us that work in these various social services um, look to have folks taking care of their health, going to food pantries, trying to get work or filing for unemployment and all these different appointments that, as you ladies both know, uh, in our neck of the woods, you need to have wheels. And so that combined with the fact that the honest truth is that many of our folks um, that are homeless, their vehicle is their home. And so if they've got a bad muffler or if they need new tires, um, that there's no service that I'm aware of um, as far as the various social agencies out there that will actually assist you know, on a regular basis with those type of repairs. So we've reached out with a couple of local uh, garages that we work with and you know, they, they give us an honest answer and a, and a fair deal on a price, and we try to help those folks out as best we can. I think you're right there. I, I have yet to come across one that helps with the vehicles, and that, that is so important that in this area. The public transportation isn't doesn't get you where you need to go all the time. Um, uh, so that is, that's fantastic. Um, so you also have your food pantry. Yes. which is great. And, and how do you stock that? Well, so the food pantry is a, a variety of sources, right? So first and foremost, we, we have our relationship with the New Hampshire Food Bank, which is the greater part of Feeding America. Um, so working with our local Hannaford grocery stores, we pick up a lot of uh, frozen meats and uh, bread items and sometimes produce items through them um, to redistribute. Um, as well as we obviously have folks that will donate uh, food items, they'll do drives, the local Boy Scouts, different churches, uh, that type of event. Um, and then of course we have to purchase some foods as well. So um, a couple of years ago when I first started in this role, um, okay, quick pop quiz. What do you think the number one item is donated to most food pantries? Pasta. Pasta. Not is it pasta? Yep. Even lots of pasta, stretch it out just a little bit more. How about macaroni and cheese mix, right? Oh, mac and cheese. Yeah. Yeah. Cheese, yeah. Easy to do. Except anybody that's ever made that, what do you need to complete that? Milk, butter. And Mark, so we we started up, we got a grant a couple of years ago and purchased a brand new commercial refrigerator and started distributing uh, milk, eggs, margarine, and cheese to every one of our clients um, that we deal with at the food pantry. So that's been a great success. And, uh, and that's obviously something that we continue to need to raise funds for. And so we have a lot of 
uh, local, you know, individuals, families, organizations that donate, you know, five dollars to five thousand dollars, and those funds go back into uh, continuing our programs and our services so that we can continue to help our neighbors in need. That's awesome. Um, okay, now the last piece, a little bit about your diaper bank. Um, yeah. Now, just a quick question, is this only baby diapers or do you also do adult diapers? That's a great that is um, one of the hugest markets out there, believe it or not. <laughs> well, I believe it because I see it here every day. So yeah, so we, we have what I believe is the area's only diaper bank that's available. There's there's some small church groups and whatnot, and there's a few food pantries that will get them from time to time. But we purposely make sure that we always have um, all the sizes in stock, including adult diapers, as you're referring to, including pads for adult beds as well, because uh, some folks are able to get those through their various insurance, um, but not all. And as you probably know, um, for young families, even if they're um, eligible and they get the WIC program, they're not eligible to get diapers through that. Um, SNAP benefits, again, if you're an older adult and you need those, they can become very expensive very fast. So, so we do offer to all ages, um, all sizes, pretty much um, we have them available. And, and you know, one other thing I wanted to note uh, with you, kind of part of the diaper bank and part of the food pantry is that Unfortunately, as we all know, when COVID struck, it really kind of wrecked a lot of nonprofits and really shook up our world. And one of the things that it did when we were talking earlier about transportation is that our local transit authority, uh, Coast Bus Service, had to uh, actually temporarily stop service initially. Um, and then when they brought it back, they had to cut back some of their routes. And we had a lot of folks that that uh, uh, Lisa, our food pantry coordinator, hadn't seen in a month or so. And so one day we had a bunch of volunteers call all these folks. Hey, we haven't seen you. Want to make sure you're OK. And, and you know, there was some of them just, yeah, I don't need it right now. Or, oh, I was sick or whatever. But we found a lot of them did not have transportation to come to us and to be able to get that food pantry assistance that they needed. And so we started doing home delivery and we still have about 60 households that we deliver twice a month to boxes of food uh, which includes that that whole dairy program we talked about as well as if they or their children need diapers we bring those in the van as well so um, that's that's something that we're proud that we initiated that and happy that we can help those people that are unable to come to us for assistance Wow. Well, it sounds like you, I mean, you have so many facets of your operation here. Um, I'm guessing you rely on a lot of volunteers to help make this happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, you know, the core to most nonprofits is all about their volunteers and, and the folks giving their time back to their community. And when I came on board a couple of years ago, we had a about oh, 50, 60 folks that uh, you know, a core group of regulars and then folks that we could call call on in a pinch or when we had an event or whatever. Well, again, I hate to keep playing that broken record, but COVID strikes and all of a sudden the vast majority of your volunteers, which happen to be 60 plus in age, either they are unable to come or in many cases their families, and I understand, but their families didn't want them exposed um, to the public as much. And so we lost about half of our volunteer base and we've been kind of building it back ever since. We've picked up some folks um, that have just stepped up and uh, really, really made a huge difference. So, so we have a core now of about roughly a little over 30 folks that are here on a regular basis. Uh, you can almost set your clock by them um, and they are in here and they're dedicated to helping uh, their neighbors in need. So it's a great thing. Wow. Well, so much amazing information. I, I could just listen to this. I'm like, oh my God, they do this. Oh my God, they do that. So what's the best way for those people who want to donate or, or donate their time or donate goods, food, clothing, or maybe they need your services or those kinds of things. So how can they, how can they learn more? 
Sure. So a couple of different vehicles, obviously the website, which is just simply sharefund.org. Um, we're on Facebook as ShareFund. Um, they can obviously come in and see us here uh, in the building, again, at the, uh, the James Foley uh, Memorial Community Center here in Rochester, right on 150 Wakefield Street. And we're here on Mondays and Wednesdays from nine to three serving the public. Um, we're in here a few other times doing some restocking so we can always take care of an emergency need if somebody can't make it during those times. Um, and of course, the old fashioned telephone that we had ringing earlier, 603-335-0011, they can call us. Um, you can donate financially online. You can donate financially um, through mail. You can drop off something. And of course, if you have diapers, if you have clothes, if you have food, or if you'd like to do any one of those things as a drive, perhaps with your organization or with your business, give us a call and we, we love to work with folks and we, we're, we're blessed to have a, a cargo van that's all decked out with our share fund logo um, and we can come by and, and pick things up or spend the day at an event if you have that. Um, it, it really, it, you know, the, the, the old uh, story of it takes a village. Well, it really does take a village. You know, we, we, we really try to look at our folks, you know, not as clients, but again, as I've used the term in our little talk here, neighbors in need. I mean, there's so many of us and COVID again, really proved it that so many of us are only a paycheck or two away from needing help with an electric bill or needing help to get some groceries for the kids or diapers for mom and dad or whatever. Um, and so that's why ShareFund is here to, to help those neighbors in need. Awesome. Well, that's, it's just fantastic what you do, Skip. So grateful for the work you're, you and your organization do for the community members, making a difference in their lives day by day by day. And thank you so much for spending the time to talk to us today. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you. And, and thank all of those folks that have supported us. And if you haven't supported us, or if you find yourself in need of support, please, by all means, reach out. And, and we've, we've all got something to share, as we like to say. Oh, great way to wrap Thank that up. Thank you so much. Woo.